This is the SAU Report, a program featuring interviews with the faculty, staff, students, and alumni of Southern Arkansas University in Magnolia. Welcome to the SAE News Report. I'm Kizzy Rudd. Today we'll be talking to Judy Pearson, bookstore manager here at Southern Arkansas University, about her career here and her experiences. Mrs. Pearson, thank you for coming. Thank you. Okay. Um, could you tell us why you decided to retire at this point? My husband's been retired for nearly three years and he's been wanting me to retire. And so as soon as I was eligible for early retirement, I decided now was the time to, to retire. Okay. Um, could you give us a little background information on yourself? I was born and raised in Bodco, High School, Bodco Arkansas. went to school at, there in Bodco. I have a husband, two children, and three grandchildren. Um, we're retired Air Force. My husband uh, and I have been, the children have been overseas for about 15 years. Okay. What is your educational background? Uh, as I told you, I graduated from Bodco High School, went to school here when it was Southern State, and am a graduate of SAU. Okay. How and when did you become employed by the bookstore? Uh, almost 12 years ago, I became employed by the bookstore. I was already working on campus. Okay. Where, where did you work on campuses? What offices did you work in? I uh, started here 18 years ago as a secretary in the admissions office and promoted from there as a secretary into purchasing and from purchasing to bookstore manager. Okay. Why did you choose SAU to stay? There are other colleges around here. Why did you choose SAU? This was home and we had come back here to Magnolia to retire and I had taught school for many years and did not want to teach school anymore, was ready for a career change, but yet I missed the contact with the students. So I was ready to get back mm -hmm. with that. You said you work at the business office? Yes. On campus. What were your responsibilities there? I was Mr. Cole's secretary and did all the purchase orders for everybody on campus and bids and had bid openings and things like this. And what are the differences between working at the business office and being manager of the bookstore? A whole new realm mm -hmm. of responsibilities. Uh, working in the business office and working with purchasing, I was already familiar with uh, state contracts and things of this nature, which we have to use state contracts in ordering supplies and some things in the bookstore. So I was already aware of how this worked and everything, but everything's totally different in the bookstore from what it was as being a secretary. Do you have a close relationship with your your coworkers at the bookstore? Or? I think I do. I always thought I did. Okay. And what changes have you seen over the past decade that you've been working at the bookstore? The biggest change I have seen is that uh, right after I went to the bookstore as manager, we changed to open stacks in the book area. When I went there, the students brought us their schedule and we got their books for them and carried them back to the counter to them. And we changed this to open stacks where the students come in, get their own books, and then they go to the checkout counter. This has been the biggest change that we have had. And what was the problem with the old way that it was um, the old way, the students never did like the books that we got for them. They always were afraid that they could have picked out something better. Mm -hmm. or, and this was just this way the students could pick their own books. I know that many students complained about buying a new book at the beginning of, of the semester and by book buyback time they get only a fraction of what they paid for the books. Um, could you tell us how the decision is made to um, how much money the students get back um, who makes that decision and how, how do you make the, come to th that decision? The students get half of new and half of used, whatever they paid for the book. If they bought the book new or if they bought it used, if the book is being bought back for the bookstore, they get half of what they paid for it. Now some books we do not buy back and this decision is not made by the bookstore of whether to buy them back or not. This is made by the faculty member. They they let me know what books to buy back either by turning in a book order to, for it to be used the next semester or they call me and tell me that they're using it if it's used alternate semesters they'll use it uh, like now we're getting ready to have buyback for 
the fall semester, but it book won't be used in the spring. They've told me to buy it back. They'll use it next fall. So this is how the decision is made of what books to buy back. And as I said, if it's purchased for the bookstore, we pay half of what you paid for it. Some things that we do not use, the wholesaler buys these books back, and they pay what they call market value, which is not as much as half because then they have to take them to their warehouse and get them ready to sell to other bookstores who may be using these books. Could you tell us the book ordering process, what happens with the book ordering process? Um, there are certain dates that book orders are due to the bookstore. They're due the 1st of October for the spring semester, and they're due the 1st of April for the both summer sessions and the fall semester. And when the book orders come in uh, to us, we have to check the shelves and see if we have any books on the shelf, and that's written down on the book order. And because we're not computerized, we do everything by hand. At that point in time, I have an order book, which is alphabetical by publisher. And at that time, I enter all of the orders in that, in that order book. If it's a book that's being used currently this semester, and we're going to use it next semester, it's marked at that time for it to be put on the buyback list. If it's a new book that's never been used before, then I write in my order book how many books to, to order. Uh, we take those book order forms and we do have uh, software for our textbooks and we do what we call adoptions. We adopt that, that uh, book order for the spring semester and that makes our buyback list. As we adopt that in the computer, it automatically either goes on the buyback or does not, depending on whether it's being used. Usually, for, let's, let's work with the spring semester. These come in in October, and around the 1st of November, I have to order every book that we're not, that's not on the buyback. We already have all of the books for the spring semester on the shelf, except what we'll get at buyback. Then at the end of buyback, I have to coordinate that inventory from buyback to the needs list, which is the original book order form that came from the instructor. And if we did not get enough books at buyback for the semester, then I have to order books so we'll have enough for the spring semester. It's a long process. It is a very long process. And in April, remember we're working with three semesters at mm -hmm. one time. Books are coming in for first summer, second summer, and for fall. So we're doing all of this at one time for three different semesters in April. Okay. Um, it's about book buyback time now. What is being done to help accommodate the students? Um, like the week before or the week of book buyback, what, what are the changes that goes on in the bookstore? Well, we have a wholesaler that... Uh, hires two people and send them in here to do our book buy. The wholesaler furnishes everything. They, uh, they've sent in two computers along with printers, monitors. They've sent in everything. And one of the buyers comes in ahead of time and gets this all set up at the back of the bookstore, which I'm sure you're familiar with. They get that all set up. Then they uh, do what we call a transaction disk that takes the buy from my computer I'm working on and puts it on these computers and sometimes there's problems with it because these computers are from the wholesaler are shipped all over America they're not just to me when when they leave here we'll ship them to another bookstore for their buyback so this person has to come in and see that then she also has to check and make sure that it's on there correctly uh, last spring we couldn't get a transaction disk yet to work so we had to take all 12 pages of my buyback and hand enter them into the buyback computer which is very time consuming but we do this and then she does a mock buy to make sure everything's working right. Okay. There are a variety of common items that students use like over-the-counter medicines and deodorants and things um, that are more, more expensive in the bookstore than they are at, say, Walmart or Kmart. Why are these items more expensive than we, a regular store? Uh, excuse me. There's no way we can compete with Walmart and Kmart. 
but these are more expensive because we're, they are there as a convenience. If you don't have time to get to Walmart or Kmart, you can run in and purchase these items. We are what they call, the vendor calls us a three item store. You'll notice that we rarely have more than three of any particular item, be it cold medicine or deodorant or hairspray or aspirin, whatever it is. We never have more than three of those items on the shelf. Because of our size, they say we are a three item store. They pre-price them because of the amount that we use or with, according to the amount we use. We have no say in what the price is on those items. So the bookstore doesn't just put their own prices? Not on, on those items. We do not. And where does the extra money go from, from the markup of the prices of the products? Uh, everything goes into the same general fund. Okay. What type of licenses agreements do you have with these, maybe Tylenol or the three products? We don't have? have any license agreement. We get this from a vendor out of Monroe, Louisiana, and they furnish everything. We don't have any kind of agreement with the different companies that furnish those. Ours comes from a wholesaler out of Monroe, Louisiana. Okay. The bookstore sells everything from mugs to clothes with the SAU logo on it. Um, who are your suppliers for these items? I have many suppliers. Uh, they call on me twice a year. And these vendors, some of them only rep one item. One, well, I should say instead of one item, they rep one brand. Some of them are what we call multiple item reps because they rep several other different items and brands. And so I probably have 10 to 12 different uh, vendors that call on me uh, in the fall of the year to order spring items and call on me in the spring to order fall items. How do you choose which vendors you want to deal with? Do you have like a, a price range in which you want to go or do they just call you and ask you if you want to want them to supply you with these items? Uh, no, we don't have a price range we go with. It's just, for one thing, we're so out of the way down here that not every vendor comes to us. And the way I got started with these is just kind of they were the ones that called me that they were going to be in, their, in our area. Could they come and show me the items that we have, that they have, and see if we wanted to buy? And I've just kind of hit and miss like this. Sometimes there have been vendors that have come by and I've decided I didn't, they didn't have good quality merchandise and I didn't want to put that in the store so I've not ordered from them. And then when they call again, I tell them that it's not necessary for them to come back. Okay, I've, I've seen that in the bookstore you say a lot of Greek, social Greek paraphernalia. Um, do you use a different vendor or do you use the, does this come straight from the Greek organizations themselves or do you have a separate source for it? No, it's from a vendor that might sell the Greeks. We do not have a lot of Greek items because of the minimums that we have to order. Like, uh, let's say you're in a Greek organization and there are eight of you in that organization. Well, if I were ordering t-shirts for you, maybe the minimum is 36 or 48 that I can order. So you can see why I can't order 36 t-shirts with the same logo or imprint mm -hmm. or design when there are only eight of you because you'd get tired of using them, buying them over and mm -hmm. over before the 36 were gone. So there are a lot of Greek items that we can't carry because of the high minimums that we have to buy. Do you find that the Greek items you do have go sell more easily than maybe other trinkets in the store? No. You know? No. Okay. Um, do you have any licenses, you don't have any licenses agreements with the Greek vendors? No. There's no, okay. No. We're not a licensed university mm -hmm. and we don't have any license with any vendors. Okay. What type of system would you like to see in the future for the, the bookstore to implement? I would love to see a POS system that's point of sale, which is like Walmart and the grocery stores, Kmart and all of these have, where they scan you at checkout. I would love to see one of those, but right now that's cost prohibitive for us. I would also like to see a computer hookup where we would be connected with the business office so that as the students come in at the semester and do their charges where we hand write those now, they would be automatically put into the computer and taken off of your account at the same time. And if you're a student worker, you know when you come in and buy stuff for the departments, we have to charge those 
out and that's handwritten and hopefully one day we'll have the system where that that can all be done for departmental charges and student charges just on the computer while you're right there and do it perhaps connected some way with the cash register that it would automatically be put on your account. Has anyone from the bookstore suggested it to the administration? Yes, we've discussed this several times through the years and we have talked to people who furnish these systems but uh, the last time I got a price it was like $75,000 to $100,000 for this type of system and that is very cost prohibitive at this time. What are your responsibilities as a manager of the bookstore? Totally responsible for everything. Seeing that it's open, seeing that uh, uh, we've got student workers there for work, seeing that everybody's there, seeing that the supplies are there, seeing that books are there. Uh, not only are we responsible for this, all the supplies and the books, we're also responsible for putting out cap and gown bids and when caps and gowns come in, we have to inventory those, make sure what we ordered is there, and that's for two graduations a year. Uh, I have to see that uh, there's someone hired to distribute those caps and gowns and for retrieval of them after graduation because some of those are rented and we have to send them back mm -hmm. the next day, or usually graduation's on Friday night, so we have to send those back on Monday. But uh, just seeing that everything is Everything is there for the students and for the faculty and staff. How many people do you have on your staff? One other full-time person other than myself. And you mentioned student workers. Um, do you find them very helpful or do you find them, do they want to work less? In some offices they want to work less and don't think they, don't, they have to do as much. I have had some student workers like that, but I've been very fortunate to have excellent student workers. and. I'm totally dependent on student workers and I have anywhere from 10 to 15 student workers a semester working for me. So How are their responsibilities different than the staff's responsibilities? Uh, well, not being a full-time employee, they don't have the responsibility that we have as full-time employees. But I use them at the cash register, they're used in stocking, they're used in cleaning. When, when people call me for reference and want to know what did that student do, I, I always tell them they've re been responsible for doing a little bit of everything, even if it's picking up a broom and sweeping or dusting mm -hmm. or, or whatever, they, they help us do everything. Um, can you give us any instances of um, people stealing from the bookstore? Yes, we, we do have quite a bit of shoplifting and we watch for this very carefully, try to, but I'm sure that more, more may get at bias than we're aware of, mm -hmm. but we do have quite a bit of shoplifting. But you haven't caught any, actually caught any? Yes, we have prosecuted one person, and uh, this uh, person had a very heavy fine for doing this, and it was all over about a $2 spiral notebook. And, and I think it was several hundred dollar fine but uh, we have, we have uh, caught several people and also with people stealing books and trying to sell them back at buyback, we, uh, we catch those nearly every semester because we have, if the student comes in and tells us their book was stolen, we have a way of flagging that mm -hmm. so that when that book comes up to sell, we check every one of them. And if they've told us the identifying marks, whatever it is in that book, so we can identify it but there's usually at least one a semester that we do catch that has a stolen book. And if it's a student who steals, are they, are they allowed to remain at the university? Or? I have no idea about that because I call security and, and security takes them from there. Okay. What has been your most memorable experience as manager of the bookstore? Oh, that's very difficult. I've had some, some very good experiences and uh, uh, I guess I can't list just one memorable experience, but I'd say one of the nicest things is the contact I have with my former student workers and continuing to hear from them wherever they are and what they're doing in their careers. What words of advice would you give to someone who wants to work at the bookstore? Um, they've got to be very dedicated and they've got to be very organized and a very patient individual. What abilities or characteristics will one have to have 
to make sure that the bookstores run in an orderly fashion and to make sure the customers are happy too. Well, as I've already told you, with working with uh, buyback and book orders and everything, you've got to be very organized because there are so many things that have to be done at the same time. And you have to see that all of this is being done and there's so many double checks that you have to go back and check again and make sure this has been taken care of and, and everything that you've got, to, you must be very organized. And again, you've got to be very patient because book orders are late coming in, uh, books are late coming in, it's getting close to the semester, you continue to call the publisher about back orders and they still don't come in, so you need to be very patient and be understanding with the students when they come in and see how expensive it is and this is shock to them and, and be understanding because at some point in time we've all been there when we know we've got to have this but we don't have the money for it right now. Have you ever had to deal with disgruntled customers and what do you tell your staff to do with disgruntled customers? Uh, we always have disgruntled customers and usually I have them to refer them to me and I try to listen and hear them out and hear their side of it because if I go into a store and I'm a disgruntled person, I want them to hear what I have to say and then I listen to their side of it and if there's anything I can do, I do it then. Sometimes there are things that I cannot do and I tell them that I will check on this and I will give them, get their phone number and their name and I will tell them that of a time that I will get back to you tomorrow or if it's something I know I don't know in one day, give me a few days but I will get back to you with this answer. Have you had professors to get in their book orders late and what do you do with those professors? Well, I don't do anything with them except I fuss at them when they don't get them in. But yes, every semester I, there's someone that comes in the day of rush, first day of the semester, and hands me a book order and then they're upset because their books are not on the shelf and sometimes they tell the students they don't understand why the books are not in because they've turned in their book order. They fail to tell them that they just turned it in the day before. So they blame the bookstore? I wouldn't say they're blaming the bookstore. I would just say that they turn their book, they've turned their book orders in and they think I should do some magic and have them <laughs> overnight. Yes. Um, what do you plan to do after your retirement? Uh, we plan to travel. As I told you, we, are, we have lived overseas for about 15 years, but we've not seen America. And so we plan to travel. We have friends, I guess, in every state that are always after us to come. And we want to visit with some of these friends. Some of them we've not seen in 20 years, but we talk to them on the phone or email or we uh, write letters. And we're looking forward to traveling and seeing America and visiting with these friends and spoiling my grandchildren. <laughs> what do your co-workers think about your retirement? Uh, they're happy for me, but they don't want me to go. Now that that is drawing closer, um, what is your overall impression of SAU? SAU is a very wonderful university. There's been someone from my family connected with SAU in some way or other since uh, 1947 when my brothers first came to school here when it was A&M and uh, we're all graduates of here and either they've been on, we've, different people have been on boards or they've worked here or teach here or whatever and so my family's had a connection with SAU for a long time and I think we have a very very good university and I'm very proud of it and the name that it has. Okay. Well I'd like to thank my guest Mrs. Judy Pearson, bookstore manager here at Southern Arkansas University. I'm Kizzy Rudd. Thanks for watching. The SAU Report is a production of broadcast journalism students in the Department of Theater and Mass Communication at Southern Arkansas University in Magnolia. <laughs>